Praise the Lord, everybody. And welcome to our Living with Hope Christian Center morning uh, live morning worship service. Hallelujah. Uh, we woke up to a surprise on this morning. Uh, our location is without power due to the storm that we had on yesterday. Uh, but the service must go on. Hallelujah. So I bring you greetings. Hallelujah. Uh, on behalf of my pastor, Pastor Courtney Jefferson, uh, I am Lady Gretchanda Jefferson, and I am here this morning uh, to bring you the word of God for today. Uh, we're going to go before God in a word of prayer. And I'm going to jump right in. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you. Oh, God, I bless you on today, Lord. I honor you because of who you are. God, I thank you and I give you glory. I give you honor and I give you praise. Father, I want to let you know on today, oh, God, that there is none like you, oh, God. Ah, oh God, you have been better to us than we have ourselves, oh Lord. Father, we appreciate you on today. We honor you. We bless your name. Now, God, we ask in the name of Jesus that you would anoint me on this morning for your glory. Cause me to preach this word, God, the way that you would have me to preach it in the name of Jesus. Bring those things back to my remembrance, oh God, that you would have me to say in Jesus' name. God, we bless you. We honor you and we glorify you. I pray that the individuals that will be watching this live, oh God, that they would be blessed immensely, oh Lord. Cover us by the blood of Jesus. And God, on this day, we thank you for the technology that causes your word to go forth. In Jesus' name, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, thank you, Lord. I am going to go ahead and jump right on in on this morning. I just first want to say, uh, I just really thank and I praise God for his goodness, his grace, his mercy. Y'all, he is truly a good God. Hallelujah. Uh, you know, words honestly cannot even really begin to express, hallelujah, just how wonderful the God that we serve is. But I'm going to do my best, hallelujah, to try to describe it on today. So if any of you guys tuned in on Thursday night uh, for our Bible talk with the Jeffersons, uh, you are aware that God had placed it upon our uh, pastor's heart to do what we call this little mini series. Uh, I'm actually up first. Uh, the Bible talk kind of kicked it off. And then, you know, now is uh, I'm kind of coming forth with my, uh, with what God has given me. And then on next Sunday, prayerfully, we will be in the building. Uh, Pastor Jefferson is going to share what God has given him in reference to uh, kind of like the heart of the sub, uh, uh, the topic or theme, which is uh, for this series, Relentless Faith. Uh, we had actually attended uh, Higher Ground International Ministries uh, 2023 uh, conference this year, and their theme for the conference was Relentless Faith. But when I tell you we had been, I, I keep talking about it because I really do believe that that conference changed so many, the lives of so many people. And me and my husband, it ignited such a fire down on the inside of us. You know, I honestly felt like we were in a revival 
I mean, the word, the glory, the power of God was just so awesome uh, during this particular time. And so uh, Pastor Jefferson felt, felt inspired to continue on uh, with that particular topic. But my, uh, my subject on today or the focus on today is that your relentless faith has a sound before God. Your relentless faith has a sound. Hallelujah. And we're going to jump right on into the uh, scripture text on this morning. And I am going to be coming from uh, Acts, the book of Acts chapter 16. And I'm going to start reading at verse number 16. And it reads, and it, and it came to pass as we went to prayer. A certain damsel, possessed with a spirit of divination, met us. So she was what we would call today kind of like a fortune teller. The, the psychics reading your hand, that's who she was, okay? Which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. The same followed Paul and us and cried, these men are the servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. And it goes on to say, and this did she many days. So in other words, this girl was following them around. First of all, she had a demonic spirit. So we, obviously, we know that uh, her compliments or you know, what adoration or whatever it was she called herself showing them really was not sincere. And so the Bible goes on to say in 18, but Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the spirit. Now, now pay attention to the fact that he didn't address the young lady. He addressed the demonic spirit that was vexing him. So the first thing that I want to uh, submit to you on today is that when you have uh, what we call the relentless faith or when you are in a situation and you are dealing with something, you have to get past the people and you got to focus on the thing that is ailing you or the thing that is vexing you. So many times we are focused on the wrong thing. But God is saying to us on today, take notice how Paul simply addressed the spirit. He didn't spend time trying to tell the young lady, uh, you getting on my nerve, uh, why are you doing this? None of that. He simply fo focused in on the matter at hand. But before I go any further, and I apologize, let me give you the definition of relentless. One of the definitions that I found was oppressively consistent, incessant. Incessant uh, means of something regarded as unpleasant, but you're continuing without pause or interruption. Uh, other words that could be used to describe relentless means that you are persistent. You are continuing on. Come on, y'all. You're constant. Hallelujah. Relentless. You're, you're, uh, you're not, you have made up your mind that you are not going to let or allow any circumstance or any situation block or stop you from doing the things of God. You are relentless, hallelujah, in your faith. Because remember, faith without works is dead. So in my works, I'm going to be relentless in the name of Jesus. Let's get back to the scripture text. So it goes on to say, but Paul being grieved turned and said to the spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out the same hour. It didn't take uh, 
or hours for this young lady to be delivered, immediately within that hour, that young lady was delivered. Hallelujah. And then it goes on to say, and when her master saw that the hope of their gains was gone. So in other words, she could no longer do the things that she was doing because of the deliverance that she received. Let us put a pause right there. When you are truly delivered from what God, from a, a demonic oppression, you don't do the same things that you used to do. When you really get delivered, hallelujah, there is an obvious change that occurs in your life. I remember before I got saved, and this is so hard for so many people to believe, but I was a cusser. Didn't really know how to cuss. There are some people who can cuss good. I was not that person who could cuss well, but I, I surely gave it an attempt and a try. But when God saved me and he filled me with his precious gift of the Holy Ghost, that was the first thing that he delivered me from. Because he gave me, when he filled me, he filled me, I was endowed with power, the evidence of speaking in tongues. Come on. The Holy Ghost came up out of me, gave me a new language, hallelujah, and he took away that cussing tongue. Now I have a tongue, oh, bless his name, that praises God and preaches his word, hallelujah. I get excited every time I think about it, hallelujah, but that was one of the first things that caught my husband's attention, which helped him to see and, and pay attention to the fact that I was saved and I was saved for real. Hallelujah, oh God, but let me get back to this, hallelujah. So her her deliverance was recognized by those who used to profit off of this young lady. And then the Bible says, um, it says, and when her ma master saw that the hope of their gains was gone, they caught Paul and Silas and drew them into the marketplace unto the rulers. In other words, openly, publicly, they bring them before the rulers and they brought them to the magistrate saying, these men being Jews do exceedingly trouble our city and teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to observe being Romans. Why were they considered to be troublemakers? Sometimes when you function and operate in relentless faith, that means that you hold on to the precepts and, and the, the doctrine of the word of God. You are relentless to hold on to God's unchanging hand. You know his word is true. Uh, the world can say what they want to say. They can call good evil and evil good all day long. But when you are relentless in the word of God, you know that his standard is holy. And I'm not bowing down to anything else. I am relentless. Hey, hallelujah. In my faith. Hallelujah, Jesus. So the Bible says because they were relentless. Hallelujah. It says it called, they called them troublemakers. Hallelujah. And they said, well, they're teaching us things that we can't observe and that we are not able to receive. And it says, and the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrates rent off their clothes and commanded them to be beat. Can you withstand the persecution? Saints of God, we are living in a day where we got to be relentless for God. Our relentlessness has a sound that reaches heaven when we stand and say, for God I live and for God I die. I'm not turning to the 
without love, but contrary to what you think, we do love, hallelujah. We love you enough to tell you the truth. We love you enough not to want to see you bust hell wide open. So we are relentless, and our relentless faith has a sound that reaches heaven because when you are relentless, when it comes to the word of God, and you stand for holiness, because he said, be ye holy, for I am holy, heaven begins to back you up. No weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. Hallelujah, oh God. So they, so they decided... They're going to strip them and beat them. Hallelujah, Jesus. And he goes on to say, and when they had laid uh, many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely, who, having received such a charge, thrust them in the into the inner prison and made their feet fast with stocks. So they had them locked down, bound, hallelujah, after they had uh, uh, openly beat them and stripped them. And their their objective was to uh, 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 strip them of any type of pride. Come on, y'all. Uh, strip them of their confidence or strip them of or try to get them to go uh, sideways to what they knew they believed or or uh, try to make sure they show them. If you come into our city, this is what happens to you. See, when people publicly try to make you uh, an example and humiliate you, come on, y'all, that's the enemy trying to come against who you are in God. But you got to be relentless, hallelujah, because your relentless faith has a Sound. It is a sound that reaches heaven that says, No matter how much you try to tear me down, no matter how much I, devil, you try to whisper lies in my ear, I shut you down in the name of Jesus. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. And because God says, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me, I'm going to run on and keep going in Jesus' name. So the Bible says, hallelujah, oh God. It says that they put them in those stocks and they had been bound in the innermost part of the, the prison, hallelujah. But check this out, oh, oh y'all. Paul and Silas could have been uh, depressed and uh, lost their confidence in God. They could have said, oh God, uh, why did you allow this to happen to me? And uh, God, why do I have to go through this? Or God, uh, uh, haven't I been, we've been good to you. Uh, God, we do so many missions and, you know, people have been saved through our ministry. Come on, y'all. You know how you try to give God a rundown of how faithful you've been and, and licking your wounds and having a pity party. Hallelujah. But I want to stir you up on today. Uh, you've got to grab hold of that relentless faith. Hallelujah, Jesus. There is a sound that God responds to, and it is the sound of praise. Hallelujah. Rather than you being negative about what you're going through and having the woe is me and the pity party, God stir up the relentless faith. Hallelujah. No matter what your situation is, you've got to believe that God and God alone is going to step in. He is a God that is an on-time God. It might seem like you've been going through what you've been going through for a long time, but God is the essence of time. The lady with the issue 
issue of blood. It was 12 years she got her deliverance. The man at the pool of Bethesda, this man spent almost a lifetime at the pool, but he got his deliverance. The lady that had been bent over for 18 long years, I God straightened her up in the name of Jesus. So it doesn't matter how long it's been. Ah, Jesus. It goes on to say in Acts 16 and 25, and at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them. Y'all, that is so important. Don't you know they probably had, the Bible doesn't say, but I can imagine the way that they brought them in. There had to be whispers about who these dudes, with no disrespect, but who these dudes were that were being locked up in prison and maybe uh, uh, it went around as to why they were there. But at midnight, hallelujah, when, rather than giving God a woe is me, they begin to praise God with their relentless faith. Come on, y'all, relentless, obsessively consistent. That situation did not change what they have been doing all along. Hallelujah. They were persistent in giving God the glory no matter what the situation was. Hallelujah. So the Bible says, and suddenly there was a great earthquake. And, and what I consider the analogy of this earthquake, uh, it says so that the foundations of the prison uh, were shaken. There is going to be a shaking he cut up of your situation. God is going to show up on the scene and the things that keep you bound, he's going to shake you loose. It says, and immediately all the doors were open. You may feel like what you've been going through, like the enemy has been blocking you, has been trying to stop you. You, but God is letting you know on today your relentless faith, the fact that you continued on. It had a sound that reached heaven. Hallelujah. It got a response from God. Hallelujah, God. Because you didn't throw in the towel, because you didn't go uh, uh, give up, you kept on going. Hallelujah. He's going to shake the foundations of that situation and he's going to open up some doors in the name of Jesus. I have a scripture text that I want to read because understand this, how Paul responded in that situation. It really was no surprise. After all, he was the man that, that when his deliverance came, he was the man that was relentless when it came to serving the world. And he took that same relentlessness right on over into the church. Ah, this was a man that fought plotted to kill him. Hallelujah. This was a man that God used to write many of the epistles. Hallelujah. His ministry was so noteworthy. If you go to the book of Acts, almost half the book of Acts has his examples of his ministry. This was a man that was so relentless for God, spent most of his ministry locked up in prison, but oh God, it didn't keep him from doing what God had called him to do. He told him, I sought the Lord three times to remove the thorn, but God said his grace was sufficient. What is he saying to you on today? If you have that same type of relentless faith, his grace is sufficient. I want to read something that he wrote in the book of Romans. It's 
inspired by God. He, it goes on to say, hallelujah. Y'all can tell that we are very excited. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. I'm going to start reading at 31. Watch in Romans chapter 8, verse 31. What shall we say then to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? When you are relentless, hallelujah. If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Come on, y'all. These are some powerful words that Paul literally lived through. Hallelujah. It says, who is he that condemneth? Is it Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again? who is even at the right hand of God, uh, who also maketh intercession for us, uh, who shall separate us uh, from the love of God. Uh, what is it that is separating you uh, from the love of God? Uh, you've got to overcome that thing, hallelujah, uh, with relentless faith, hallelujah. Uh, shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword as it is written for thy sake we are killed all the day long we are counted as sheep for the slaughter nay in all things we are more we are more because our relentless faith has a sound that we send up before God ah, when we begin to praise him when we begin to declare his word we are more hallelujah than conquerors through him that loved us and this is the part that I really really love Paul says for I am persuaded are you persuaded on today do you have the faith the grain of a mustard seed y'all when you have relentless faith all it takes is a little bit to cause the mountains to be removed do you have the faith on today that says I believe God I believe God no matter how it looks I believe God why because I persuaded. It said that neither death nor life nor angels, in other words, nothing, nor principalities, hallelujah, nor powers nor things present or things to come. What is he saying? I'm not worried about what I'm going through now and I'm not even worried about what may come, but I am persuaded that God got me. Do you have that type of faith where you can praise him in the midst of your storm? Is your faith relentless to send a sound to God and say, oh, I see what I'm dealing with, but at the end of the day, you are worthy of my praise. He says, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Paul lived what he preached. He lived. He was not just a man that spoke a lot of eloquent words. Come on, y'all. He lived what he preached. He lived it. He was an example of relentless faith. When he was locked up in prison, he sent us, there was a sound that rang and God responded to the relentless faith. What is that sound? It was his praise. 
murmuring and complaining, woe is me, is not the sound of relentless faith. The sound, your relentless faith has a sound, and it is your praise. It is your adoration. It is your declaration of your belief that God is able. He's able to do what? Whatever you need. You believe what he told Moses when he said, 